All right, welcome back to another Fix It Friday. Today is a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at a Game Boy cartridge. Uh, we're just gonna be swapping the battery out on this one. So it's a little bit in between of a how-to and a fix it. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So here we go. This is our Pokemon game. Most games aren't gonna have the save battery, but some are. I believe most of the Pokemon games are. And then some of the Zelda games. Uh, but there's a mixture of them. You'll know because it won't save anymore. So that's how it'll you'll tell uh, So anyways, let's get started. Let's open it up first And for this you're just gonna need a security bit. I have one right here This one's a little bit smaller Than the normal the Normal security bit will work on a n64 uh, SNES those type of ones it's and GameCube whereas this one's just a little bit smaller there so I actually bought them in a lot together, uh, both security bits. So it's just a good thing to have, especially if you're doing a lot of console repair or any of those kind of works there. All right. And this one just slides out like that and lifts out. And good news, we have a legit copy of Pokemon. <laughs> we can dump out the the uh, the PCB there, and then we'll just take a look here. So we know because it doesn't save, but we can do a check as well, which I'll do now. Just gonna measure voltage here. We have positives up top, negatives up down bottom, and we are sitting really, really low on that battery. So, let's get to it. All right, a couple things you're gonna want is some flux first. Uh, so I'm gonna add some flux to each side of the solder pads here. Next thing you're gonna want is some solder wick. This is the type that I use. Uh, I constantly use this one. I, I get it off of Amazon. I just buy a bunch of them at one time. I think it's a little bit more expensive, but it works really well for me. So this is the one I keep in my shop capacitor right here if you if you lay this across that it could heat up that one and knock it out of place so you want to be cognizant of where this is the solder wick as well as your soldering iron anyways we'll go ahead and just heat this guy up and we'll just let it sit here for a second and let the solder wick work and wick up most of that solder off the pad there Gonna I'm just going to clip up the, uh, up the solder wick so that we can get a fresh piece here. And then we're going to work the same thing here. So I press it, and then I'm holding it at a weird angle just so I'm not touching that uh, the capacitor. Because if we lose that thing, that's going to be a headache trying to get it back off. Awesome. All right, and most of the solder's off now. So we'll just heat up the pad itself. Yeah, a little bit of pressure, but not too much pressure. And then you can feel it come off there. And the same thing on the other side. Don't be too forceful with it, because if you're too forceful with it, you'll lose that pad off the top there. And once you lose a pad, then you're going to have to chase down exactly where it solders to. And we'll just lift just like that. Cool. We'll clean up the two pads, then we're going to hit it with just a little bit more flux, and then, uh, ref uh, then we're going to just... Put some fresh solder on those pads. Just a tiny bit more flux. This is just gonna help the solder flow on top of those pads a little bit better. And we're not putting too much solder. You're not gonna you're not gonna overly um, you're not gonna put too much because if you put too much, you're just gonna have blob on it and it's just not gonna make a, a clean connection. and our replacement battery here. The one thing I will do as well is just put a little bit of flux on top of, or excuse me, on the pins themselves. Not too much. This is just gonna help that solder flow over the top of them. 
So now we have a designation here. So this one's going to be the positive lead. We have a positive sign right here. So we know exactly which direction it's going to go. Step up on top of there. Hold it in place and we'll do one pad at a time. Nice and clean. Beautiful. Once it's all cooled off, then we'll go ahead and clean it with some IPA just to clean up the, the joints themselves. Get that excess flux off of there. And the last thing I'll do, which I should have done first, really, before I put that one on, was made sure that it has a charge on it. Um, my recommendation is definitely check. If you're not getting your batteries from a reputable place or if you're just getting them uh, randomly online, you wanna make sure that you do that because some of these will come out with no voltage on them as well. And that's a bummer because you spend all this time, well, you spend the time putting it in and then you realize that it doesn't. But always check it just to make sure. And we are all good to go. We're at 3.3 volts here. Just a little bit higher. Um, I believe it's a three volt battery, so it seems a little weird. While we're in here, you can clean the pins on them if you need to. Uh, any of the any of the cleanup there. This board actually looks really really nice. It's in pretty decent shape, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, goes back in like that. Top on. Slide it in. Remember, always use the right tools for these. I know some people might get impatient if they don't have the proper tool and not want to order it and wait for the part to come in, but realistically, get the correct tools to do this because you're going to do way too much damage trying to do special tricks or tips to get these screws out when you don't have the actual Loctite, which is a bad, it's a bad deal. I see a ton of consoles. I see a ton of big game cartridges come through where people strip out the screws or they do damage to it just because they were being a little bit impatient. Remember, the right tool will always help you out a thousand times. So it's well worth it. These things were like five bucks, I think, and I use them all the time. So uh, end a rant there. Anyways, uh, we're all good on this. Let's just go ahead and toss it in. Just make sure everything's good. Awesome. Looks good to go. Uh, we can check it. Let's see. Let's put a save on there, I guess. All right, so we did a save. Perfect. Cool. That was it. Very, very simple. You just need a few little things, but uh, if you have a ton of these, I would definitely recommend investing in some of this stuff. Uh, obviously a soldering iron, some flux, some solder, some solder wick, uh, and you can, you can do it at home. So yeah. Uh, anyways, thanks for joining me on another Fix It Friday. Check out any, any of my other videos if you haven't already and subscribe if you haven't already uh, for more content like this. All right. We'll catch you guys later.